G'day fellas, welcome to a casted game of Age of Empires 4. In this game, we're going to be watching Hagrid playing the Abbasid Dynasty, going up against Hutt, who is also playing the Abbasid Dynasty. So it's a little bit of a mirror match, they're both playing on a water map. Did you guys hear that voice right there? <laughs> 900 dollars Hi YouTube. Hi YouTube, indeed Caverna TV, hi YouTube. Hope you guys are doing well over there. So we've got an Abbasid mirror today. Now Abbasid... Probably one of the strongest water sieves at the moment, just simply because of their cheap docks. So we've talked about this before. You see the dock going down over here on the left-hand side of Hagrid's Island. So Hagrid dropping this one down. Only 75 wood. You can see it right there. So if you're wondering about Hagrid, you're unfamiliar with who he is. He comes, he hails from the Age of M or the Age of Mythology community over on the north side of the map. Hart, he is an Australian, just like me, Australian. We are a rare breed, but uh, look, you can tell us apart quite easily. Uh, he is a StarCraft 2 pro. So this match is quite a high-ranking match. Uh, Hutt, I, I think he's rank 4 uh, in the closed beta. Uh, I, I don't think Hagrid actually played in the closed beta. If he did, uh, I, I didn't see him. But uh, both players now going to begin training up some fishing boats and doing the right thing. I noticed a little bit of lag right there. I'm not sure if that was on my mouse right there or if that was the server. Uh, Hutt SC2 pro, is this Huck? No, different player. So Huck is the Canadian, I think. And Hutt is the Australian. So I would hate to see him match up between Hutt and Huck because you'd have a TVP that would be hard to pronounce. But uh, nonetheless, both players continue to move on. And now we've got beginnings of the expansions. We'll take a look at the current resources. Maybe even look at income per minute. That will give us a nice indication of where each player is up to. You can see that the income per minute is beginning to climb uh, for each player. And it's mainly dependent on how many villagers they've got on the resource. Well, I'd say that's highly dependent on the amount of villagers they've got on the resource. But you can see that on the north side, Hutt actually has a lot of villagers up here. Nine villagers. Now, we've watched Hutt play on this map before. The last time he did it, he didn't go for a double dock or a triple dock. He went for a quadruple dock. Now, I don't think he was making fishing boats out of all of those docks. But I'll tell you right now, there... There was a lot of docks. There was a lot of fishing boats. There was there was a lot of water. And this map, obviously, we're playing on uh, Archipelago. Archipelago is a water map separated by two bodies. The only way you're going to be able to get to your opponent's base is via the water. Unfortunately, flight hasn't yet been invented, so it means that players will unfortunately have to traverse the seas and potentially meet their demise with the Kraken. No, I'm just kidding. The Kraken hasn't been added yet. I say yet, because I, I think they're going to add it in April Fool's patch. Or at least, that's what I'm going to... I'm, I'm going to, like... I'm going to start a hashtag. It's going to be add the Kraken. Something like that. I think we need to get the Kraken added at least a little bit, like, to the game. Just as a meme. Maybe in the scenario editor. Uh, you know, I, I, I never know if the developers are going to take me seriously. But if you're listening, developers, let's get a Kraken. Hashtag add a Kraken. All right. So, now... Players are beginning to head out to gold. We see down to the south. Okay, we'll take a look at Hagrid. Both players playing the Abbasid Dynasty. Three villagers. Oh. Much love for AoE4. Uh, Inferno Extreme. Yes, I'm really enjoying AoE4. It's it's good fun. It's great fun. Hashtag add Kraken. I got to agree with you. Yes, we need more Kraken. But uh, House of Wisdom now going down for Hagrid. Hagrid adding it relatively early. I, I would say he's a little bit behind on his gold macro, but I'm sure he'll pick up, up on it. We'll take a look over at Hutt and see how he's doing. Hutt also going to be adding his House of Wisdom, but you can just see the difference in economic style that these players have got. So you've got Hutt, who is going for a double dock opening, which in my opinion is definitely the best opening. I, I think you could probably even go triple dock opening if you can find that third fish. And I mean, there is a third fish out here, but the problem is, how do you get a dock down? I want to thank uh, that fellow down under. Thank you very much, pal. Thank you very much, Minestrone23. Coming in with the Prime Gaming. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Hope you're enjoying the Age of Empires 4 content as well. Now, keep in mind, Shorefish, deep sea fish. They are different. This this actually replenishes itself. So you might think like, you know, I'm wasting all these these fish that are out here. I'm, I'm, I'm overfishing. They will replenish themselves. Once they go down to zero, they will come back up slowly. I think they slowly, maybe like 300 and then 600, that sort of thing. They, they replenish over time. So you're able to continue throughout the game accessing those fish. And keep in mind, there's a lot of fish out here. So you can always go drop a dock down on this middle island. Use that as your drop-off point. On this map, there are two sacred sites. Okay, you've got the sacred site over to the east, sacred site over to the west. One of the options that you've always got is to look at capturing those sacred sites and potentially win the game by holding those sacred sites. Your opponent would have to challenge you. One of the other alternatives is that you can go for a wonder victory. I want to thank uh, that fellow down under. Thank you very much, pal. Thank you very much, Kavala Tag. Sup, your Aussie. Sup with you, man. Nine months. That's a long time. That's enough to have a baby. Uh, I don't think that we've had a baby, but if we did, we'd probably name it Kavala Tag and Drongo. 
Drongo tag. No, I, I, I don't think we. I don't think we'd have a baby. I don't think. I just don't think it would work between us. Like, you know, you're you're an uptown girl. That's not the kind of girl for me. Anyway, moving forward, Hut continuing to expand. Now got his age up in queue. Going to be going up with the culture wing here. So I think this is the correct decision on water maps. We'll take a look at Hagrid down to the south. We'll see what he's up to. Also going up with the culture wing. So both players identifying that they need to get this up. But look exactly what Hagrid is doing again for the second game in a row. He is going for that all-important golden age. We see he's sitting at 9 out of 10 at the moment. Is he going to add that 10th building? Where is it? There it is. Golden age activated. So already getting that golden age. We're at 5 minutes 41 at the moment. He's having a great time. We have a look at Hutt. Where's Hutt at with rela in relation to his golden age? Hutt sitting on 9 out of 10. Hutt's actually pretty close to it. Going for his golden age as well. You see, seeing, I think they're actually achieving their golden ages quite naturally though. Uh, I don't necessarily think they're forcing golden ages. Sometimes I, if, I think Hagrid is forcing his golden ages. You can see he's sitting at 80 pop. But when it comes to Hutt... Um, I guess he hasn't really... Has he extended this down here? I, I'm not sure if I can... Yeah, we can't actually see... Uh, oh, this... No, this, I think this is, because it's got the House of Wisdom influence. This doesn't have the House of Wisdom influence, so this is part of the network. Uh, so, yeah. Going to be looking to, to reach that Golden Age very, very shortly. Uh, and doing the Fast Castle here, we see. So, Fast Castle. Going to be pretty decent here on the age up. Macro has worked out very well. We'll take a look over at Hagrid, see his perspective. Hagrid thinking about things differently. Having a look at his dock, we see that it's rallied over to his enemy's base. He's creating one Dao. He's also getting extended lines. So he's heading out in this direction. We see that he's heading out just towards the Krakatoa summit in the middle of the map. And uh, down towards the south point of his island. He's got a scout just chilling out there, Hut does. So I guess my question at this point is, how is, how is Hagrid going to be able to counter Hut? Because Hut is undoubtedly going to be going up to the third age. Going to be getting out a whole lot of these bad boys right here. The Backlaz. And he's going to be having a very easy time against his opponent. Uh, now clicking up to the third age already. You see going up for a very nice fast castle there. Also getting preservation of knowledge after. So he has that in queue ready to go. And going to be going straight up to the third age. So in the meantime though, you spot his docks. Docks aren't doing anything. He is going to potentially get idled out here as the Dow moves in. Going to begin to focus down these fishing boats. But... You see just how many fishing boats he's got. He's not even going to be too worried. I think he could probably just even idle a couple of fishing boats out here and just start healing them. Look how much damage those fishing boats are taking. They're absolutely flaming those boys. you got to be careful, but they heal up very quickly. You can see just how much they heal up. And just slowly sending them back is so, so smart. Second one now coming in. Bit of a difficult time for him because you can see he's stacked up quite a few resources uh, Hut has. He's going to need to trade these resources in to make sure he gets extra gold. But uh, now going to be heading in. And using his own fishing boats to keel up any of the existing fishing boats. He can garrison fishing boats if he needs to, but going to be getting some dows of his, his own out. But now he's in a bit of a difficult spot as the fishing boats begin to move around the south of the island. They get caught out of position. He's actually leading them away from his dows. Uh, so very smart move there. Now keep in mind he does actually have the... Um, he does have the, the dock bonus there, but my fear is that... The, he would still be losing his ship anyway. Going to be losing all of these fishing boats, but taking up his opponent away. So really smart move here, sacrificing his own fishing boats for the good of the colony and the right move, definitely in my eyes. So Hutt making a difficult decision there, but a need... What, uh, what, what's the word I'm looking for? A necessary decision. Let's take a look over at his opponent, Hagrid, down to the south. How his economy is doing. Actually getting blacksmith technologies. Already got that plus one attack. Going to be putting out extra damage. So you can see on his ships, he's already got plus one damage. No plus one armor just yet. And keep in mind, the doubt is affected by Blacksmith. It does benefit from Blacksmith upgrades. The new ship that Hut is going to be able to have access to in the third age, the Bagler, does not benefit from those upgrades. But at the same time, you don't really need to worry about it. We've got Hut that's going to be losing a lot of fishing boats here. We just see how quickly they're going down. Three fishing boats going down. Four fishing boats. Hut, you got to wake up here, buddy. Even just moving them back here... It's, it's going to save you so much time, but like, you are just losing resource after resource. These guys are 60 wood each right now. Hut is looking in a difficult position because he's losing the majority of his economy. Is it worth holding off on making military ships to lose all of the economy that, you know, carried you that far in the first place? I feel like it probably isn't. I think I feel like this is an incredibly bad trade. Of course, Hut is going to be able to push out of here. Undoubtedly, the backlash are going to be able to turn the tide of battle. But at what cost? At what cost? Because right now he sits here with no economic ability whatsoever. He's got a single Dow that's going to begin harassing his opponent, but it's not enough. It's not enough. When you compare the fact that Hagrid now is going to have to deal with these, Bagel is actually taking quite a bit of damage here uh, compared to the, uh, the the English ships that, that are incredibly, or the, the Holy Roman Empire ships that are very strong. 
Another dock down to the south. A second dock, actually. Going to begin training up a Bagler. And now we see Hagrid going to be going up to the third age. So I would say, look, at this point on this map, I would definitely feel like the, the one who starts off with the early Dows in this, in this matchup is definitely going to be starting off with a bit of an advantage. Uh, when you compare it over to his opponent, though, like we, we can see three fishing boats out here, three fishing boats out here. He's having a great time. Even though his economy is not too crazy, at least he's got six fishing boats. His opponent's got none. So it's 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 a difficult spot. Dow going to be a little bit of Dow and Dow action right here. He's in a bit of a difficult spot, I would say. About to go the way of the Dodo. Sealed off. Goodbye, my friend. Going to be dropping some Spanish treasure underneath the port. Right there, trying his best. He actually looks like he's beached himself. And uh, he's given up. The Dow's managed to, to go their separate ways. But now, now the backless. Has he... Has he done a dirty right here? Hot with the, the 9,000 IQ right now coming through. Going to be able to force his opponent into the corner of the map. He's so smart. He is so smart. Look at the way that he's angling his opponent's ships. Going to be forcing them to come across here. Hagrid in a difficult spot now because the backlers are opening fire. The first one goes down. Second one about to go down as well. You see that these units have got, in addition to their normal arrows, they've also got a ballista. This is a research that they've got from the dock that's come through. I think it sits right here. And so now these backlers have got ballistas as well as arrows. So these these docks are going to stand absolutely no chance. Keep in mind they do much greater damage to ballistas. They do 50 attack versus the 10 range damage. So you can just see how quickly they slice through these fishing boats as well. To the north of the map, the Dows, oh, they intercept the villagers that are moving out on the transport ship. It looks like it's going to be absolutely no contest. The, the four villagers, unfortunately, going to get picked off there by the Dows. A very nice pickup there. Very smart play. And now, fishing boat moving back with a couple of Baglers. Uh, looking to secure the rest of the map, but it's going to be Bagler on Bagler action once it reaches the third age, Hagrid is. Going to up, up with the third age. We'll take a look exactly what he's aging up with. It is, of course, the military wing, so the correct decision once again. Both players, I think, going for the military wing. Yeah, both players going for the military wing, so cultural wing into the military wing. And now Hagrid reaching the castle age. We'll take a look at his docks and spot whether we see those upgraded ships coming through. We don't see anything coming through this one just yet. Nothing on this one. But we do, in fact, have Armored Hull coming through. So it increases the armor of all military ships by two. And here you see Navigator Lookout. So it increases the sight range and their weapon range of military ships. Multiple fights happening down here. Bagler on the south. Bagler up on the north. Forcing the Dows off the fishing line. But at the same time, there's really not a lot of fishing boats. Expansion happening out over to the west now. A mosque going down over on this island. And how smart is he? There's two relics over here. One of the things you've got to be careful of when you've got monks over here is they are defenseless. If a wolf manages to find its way into the path of your monk, you're going to have trouble. Fortunately for Hut, it looks like he's going to be okay this game. But I'd love to see him potentially get a transport out over onto this island. And look to do the same thing over here. Potentially capture this sacred site. Maybe even move out over into the middle. And that's exactly what he's doing. He is so on the ball. He's got APM out his wazoo right now. There is just... The, the APM that is required to do this kind of stuff, it's it's insane. Because it requires a lot of fiddling stuff. You know, you got to put stuff in the boats. you got to move the boat. you got to send the boat over. you got to evac. Then you got to get them to build stuff. It, there's a lot of stuff to think about. You don't... Like, there's no way you can shift queue that. So, really props going over to Hut for being able to do this. And look at the mass of backlers beginning to build right now. I think that's how you pronounce it. I want to I really give it a bit of a... A backler like that. But uh, I don't know. I don't know if it's uh, if it's uh, really pronounced that way. Now we see, once again, Imam is moving across. This Imam has come from the mosque over on the western island. Going to be coming across to the middle. And I definitely feel like at this point, Hut is at a very advantageous position. He's got no villages on food right now. A difficult spot for him. He could be moving out here, but he is really not counting on that because he's chopping plenty of, uh, plenty of wood. We take a, a quick stock take. 45 villages at the moment for Hut. Hagrid, on the other hand, 52 villages. And now we've got to keep going down in the middle of the map. A keep is going to be defending this sacred site. Going to be keeping it up. And, well, I, that wasn't intentional. I'll say that much. But he's going to be having a pretty decent job. Look how many backlers are coming out for Hut. This is ridiculous. How many, how much do these cost? They're, I guess they're relatively similar to the Dow, but they just do so much more damage. Dows are going to have a difficult time keeping up with it. We see a couple of fishing boats in there as well. Enemy capturing the sacred site. Hut having a bit of a difficult time. Hagrid going to be on the run right here. Has he realized there's so many backlers right now for Hut? This is a huge amount of units that have just come out for him. He's up to... We'll take a look. Hut's perspective. Up to eight backlers right now. And a single transport ship just hanging out in there as well. Just just getting in on the action. Why not? You know, it's a, it's a classic little thing that transport ships love to do. 
Now, from oh my lord, from within the from within the shallow, so you can't actually see your enemy. Uh, so we take a look. It prevents line of sight. It acts like if you've ever played League of Legends, I think it's like the reverse of League of Legends. You you are prevented from seeing through this, so you can't see what happens. It's like the bushes in in LOL. Um, so very similar mechanic there. Uh, I don't know exactly what it is on the open ocean that is obscuring one's vision so great, but uh, apparently it, it's quite a significant amount of seaweed. So much so that it prevents your sailors from seeing at the top of their masts and uh, and forcing you to, to really dive in and, and face check the bush. But uh, nonetheless, now the fights begin. We've got plenty of backlers coming out for Hagrid. Eight backlers down here. Plenty of fishing boats on the south. Going to be able to heal these, these up as well. Hut continuing to move towards the north of the map. Eight for him. When we take a look at the upgrades, they look relatively similar. Exactly the same stats on these units. We don't have... We have a ballista for both of these ships as well. But Hagrid realizing... Whoa! That fell down under. Thank you very much, pal. Thank you very much, Battlebird, coming in at the tier one. Welcome, 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 fella. Hope you're enjoying the Age of Empires 4 content. And I tell you what, I'm enjoying this keep in the middle. This is going to keep him so safe. You can see the villagers just doing a little bit of a, a route around the keep to, uh, to keep it extra safe, but... I'm expecting he's going to be capturing this sacred site. And now the timer begins because he's got a keep here that's going to be going down as well. And he is just so smart. He's so on the ball. He knows when it comes to this map, you really have to think outside the box. Even if you win the water battle, you still have to be thinking about how you're going to beat your opponent. Because there is the chance that your opponent could go for a wonder victory. Your opponent could do some sort of crazy drop, something crazy like that. And so look at this already. Both players now beginning to fight over the sacred sites. We'll take a look and turn on the map. Make sure that you guys have everything revealed. And this cheeky little archer in here preventing the sacred site from being captured and at the same time killing the imam, denying this. Keep in mind, this is the only imam that he's got. No more imams on this island. If he delays this, he manages to get the imam inside the castle. At the same time, a bit of a fight happening to the north. So keep that in mind. The castle is going to be able to deal with this. Imam is going to be able to successfully capture this sacred site unless he can manage to get out a super snipe. 13 HP on that Imam. There is the potential for him to get that. But now Backler's moving back, taking down a dock as they as they head away. We have a look at exactly the, the count. We've got nine Backlers for Hagrid. On Hut's perspective, we see all of the docks healing up. Or all of the Backlers healing up and managing to capture that sacred site now. Village is going to be burning that one down as well. A single villager down here to the south uh, and a couple of archers. And that sacred site going over to Hut. It's a difficult position now for his opponent because now Hut is going to begin to reinforce these sacred sites. And that's when it gets difficult. All you need to do to deny these sacred sites is to be standing in the sacred site unopposed. I think it works out to be for about 30 seconds. If you can manage to do that, then you capture, you recapture the sacred site. And now we see battering rams being made by the remaining archers on the island. Really not like this is, this is, I feel like this is a bit of a large, last ditch effort at this point. Because what do you do here? Because now your opponent is pushing you back on water. You've lost both sacred sites. And keep in mind, when it comes to these sacred sites, we'll have a look at the sacred tracker. He's got two sacred sites. It doesn't tell us the timer, though, on these sacred sites. But I can tell you now it's going to be 10 minutes. So he probably captured them less than a minute ago. So he's still got about nine minutes to intervene in this. And look at the villagers coming out now and going to be denying the archers that are building this battering ram. So you had any hope of being able to take this down. It just went out the window as the villagers massacred the last remaining member of this island. This island. And the game gets called with that. The villagers have taken out the very last archers. Ladies and gentlemen, if you're watching this on Twitch, make sure you say hi to YouTube. If you're watching this on YouTube... I think uh, that fell down under. Thank you very much, pal. If you're watching this on YouTube, make sure you say uh, hi to Nameless291 because he's just said hi to you guys as well. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys have enjoyed it and I'll catch you guys in the next one.